section of God's Word that I want us to focus on this morning is our Old Testament lesson that is, was printed for us on page 4 in our bulletins, Isaiah chapter 34, or chapter 35. I'm going to focus in basically on verse 4. First, though, please join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look around this world, it's so easy to be discouraged. It's so easy to become jaded. But Lord, help us to look to your word this morning and be reminded that you came to save. Bless us, Lord, as we focus on your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People are bad. Turn on your television, tune in your radio, scroll through your socials, and you will quickly realize that people are just bad. When I was little, I used to think that all the, the really bad people, all the, the really bad people, they lived in far off foreign lands because... Well, that's where the gas chambers were built. That's where mass graves are dug. That's where women and children are trafficked. That's where all the drug cartels are headquartered. When I was little, I used to think, that's where the bad people live in distant, far-off places. But the more time I spend in the world, the more I realize, well, that's not exactly true. Bad people are much closer than you think. Earlier this week, just 30 miles from where you're sitting right now, a 14-year-old kid shot and killed two of his classmates, two of his teachers, and injured nine other people. That's bad. Turns out the bad people are much closer to us than we thought. That story of that, that very bad thing, it made the news and it was heartbreaking footage to watch, but let's really be honest, it wasn't shocking. I, I mean, that kind of thing happens around us all the time. In 2024, there have been over 400 shootings like the one that just occurred at Appalachia High School. Bad people all around us, bad people very close to us. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if... Somebody woke up outside of Auschwitz, Germany this morning, turned on the news and said, Wow, there are a lot of bad people doing bad things in America. The bad people aren't in far off foreign lands. The bad people are, are here. They're all around us. And somehow, they seem to be going from bad to worse. Doesn't it feel that way? Doesn't it feel like the world is just falling apart, ripping apart at the seams? It's going from bad to worse. I, I'm curious, if you agree with me, raise your hand if you think the morality of the world is on decline. Raise your hand if you think people are going, oh my goodness, from bad to worse. I was also going to ask you to raise your hand if you think people are getting better, but you were so quick on that first one. I, and you match, actually, with the most recent poll from the Gallup polls, you know, the people who do polls. They ask the people, they, they say, what do you think? 83%, 83% believe that people are going from bad to worse. And by the way, that was a global poll, so that means the people of the world believe the people of the world are bad, and they're getting worse. Bad people all around us. Somehow those bad people are getting worse. Aren't you sick of it? Aren't you tired? Aren't you frustrated? Aren't you fed up? Don't you wish God would just come and do something about it? You ever pray that? Have that, that come, Lord Jesus, come. Come and do something about all the bad people. I'm sick of turning on the TV and hearing another heartbreaking story, seeing some kid shoot another kid, or somebody get raped, or somebody... And I'm sick of it. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Do something about all the bad people. 
Well, if that prayer has ever left your lips or just seeped from your soul, you might be interested to hear what the prophet Isaiah has to say this morning. Prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 4 writes, Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. And in the previous chapter, chapter 34, the prophet gives us an idea of the kind of vengeance and divine retribution our God is capable of. There the prophet writes, The Lord is angry with all nations. His wrath is upon all their armies. He will totally destroy them. He will give them over to slaughter. Their slain will be thrown out. Their dead bodies will send up a stench. The mountains will be soaked with their blood. Well, that's exactly what we want, right? We want God to come with vengeance and divine retribution. We want God to come and punish all the bad people and pay them back for all the bad things they have done. The question is, who are the bad people? Who do we want God to punish and pay back? Who do we want the Lord Jesus to come with vengeance and divine retribution for? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. It's, it's all those people who commit the genocides and the human trafficking and, and the, the, the frauds. Those are bad people. So come, Lord Jesus, come. Come with vengeance and divine retribution on them. But they're not the only bad people in the world. There's still more bad people. There's people all over this world. There are murderers. There are rapists. There are people taking advantage of other people. They're bad people. So come, Lord Jesus, come with vengeance and divine retribution on them. Still, there's more bad people in the world. So come, Lord Jesus, come. Come with vengeance and divine retribution on all the hateful and all the cruel and all the hurtful. Come with vengeance and divine retribution on all the, the backstabbers and the slanderers and the irreverent. Come with re vengeance and divine retribution on all the, the greedy and the desirous and, and the, the, the immoral. Come with vengeance and divine retribution on all the gossips and the jealous and the envious. Come with vengeance and divine retribution on all the bad people. Punish them and pay them back. Right? What's wrong? What happened to the look of righteous indignation on your face? What happened to the shaking your head in disgust? What, what happened to the being sick and tired of it all and being fed up with it all? What happened to the praying, come Lord Jesus, come, come with vengeance and divine retribution? Do you not want Jesus to come and punish the bad people? Do you want, want Jesus to come and pay them back for all the bad things they've done? Does it have something to do with the fact that you realize that if the Lord Jesus were to come back with vengeance and divine retribution, if Jesus were to come and punish and pay back all the bad people, then the Lord Jesus would be coming to punish and pay back you. You see, it's incredibly easy for us to be on this high holy horse and look down on all the bad people and so quickly condemn them and, and, and just shake our heads in disgust at them. It's so easy for us to be that way until we realize we are them. We are the bad people. We are the ones doing bad things. You realize that you're the bad people doing bad things. You're way less willing to pray, come Lord Jesus, come with vengeance and divine retribution. But today the prophet sees a time when God will come in the prophet's eyes. Says he's coming. But what's interesting as the prophet looks forward to a time when God will come, the prophet doesn't see 
piles of dead bodies sending up a stench. The prophet doesn't see a mountain soaked with blood. What the prophet sees is the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, the lame leaping like a, a deer. The prophet looks forward to see this, but let's, by God's grace, we, we, get to, we get to look back and see all this, right? We read in our second lesson and in our gospel lesson, this kind of stuff happens all the time throughout the gospels. Jesus once said to John's disciples, he said, go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. We have the benefit of looking back to what the prophet looked forward to. And when we look back, we don't just see good things being done for bad people. We look back and we see Jesus. We see the Son of God. Become also the Son of Man. And Jesus is unlike any other person. Jesus is a good man. Jesus is better than a good man. Jesus is a perfect man. And so Jesus is the only one who has the right to shake his head in disgust and be filled with righteous indignation for all the bad people. Jesus is the only one to, to get sick and tired and fed up of all the bad things that is happening are happening. Jesus is the only one to look at you and me and say, you're the one who deserves to be punished. You're the one who deserves to be paid back. Jesus has the right to come with vengeance and divine retribution to you and to me. But that's not why Jesus came. The prophet tells us Jesus came to save you. The goodest of the good offered his life for the baddest of the bad. Jesus allowed himself to be abandoned by men, condemned by the church, forsaken by God. Jesus endured the vengeance of God. The goodest of the good endured it, so the baddest of the bad could be saved. The goodest of the good made payment for the baddest of the bad. And when he did, the earth shook, rocks split, darkness covered the land, and before he breathed his last breath, again, the goodest of the good declared that the debt of the baddest of the bad had been paid in full. Jesus was punished for you and me. Jesus came to offer his life for all the bad men and all the bad women, including you and including me. Jesus made payment for all the bad men and all the bad women, including you and me. Jesus did not come with vengeance and divine retribution to, to extract that from you. Jesus came to offer himself up for you. Jesus came to save you. To save me. To save all the bad people like us. And I think that changes the way we look at people. I hope that changes the way we look at people. When we look at all the bad people all around us in the far off foreign lands and the ones in our own backyard doing all those really bad things, yes, our hearts still break. Yes, we get sad when we hear about another tragedy and another tragedy. Yes, we get frustrated. It does seem like people are going from bad to worse. But as we look at all those bad people, how can we be filled with righteous indignation? How, how can we condemn them? How can we shake our heads in disgust? How can we be sick and tired? How can we be fed up? How can we pray, come Lord Jesus, come and, and bring vengeance upon them and extract divine retribution from them? How can we pray that when in God's grace, Jesus came to save bad men and bad women like you and like me? So instead of being so quick to condemn, let's go to them. 
Let's talk to them as one of them. And let's tell them about the vengeance and divine retribution that bad men and bad women like you, like me, like them, that we deserve. But let's tell them Jesus didn't come to punish us or pay us back. Let's tell them that Jesus came to save them. Let's just tell them what the prophet Isaiah tells us this morning. Let's tell them to be strong. Do not fear. Your God has come. He has come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He has come to save you. He's come to save the bad men, the bad women, you, me, them. So come, Lord Jesus. Come. Amen.